Okay guys, I am back again. And right now I am going to show you guys the brand new Photon Zero by Anycubic. Okay, before I continue with this video, some doughhead did it again and left his B camera on time lapse mode and ruined all the footage. So instead of redoing and reshooting everything, we're going to go with this camera angle. Sorry. Hey guys, Chris from Versus 3D back one more time. And like I said, the Photon Zero from Anycubic. So I've clearly already taken out of the box. There is not much in the box because there's really not much you need. So what we have is the printer itself and its acrylic cover. It came with the power cable, which I already undid the tie on. Print removal tool, SD card, I'm sorry, USB stick. A couple of wrenches and this wrench here I believe is for the FEP but I'll double check and then over here we've got our after service and sales support card and our uh, QC inspection card and standard rubber gloves mask and a whole stack of filters to filter your resin also once again the nicely laid out colored manual there's really not a lot um, with this machine. I did take a peek at the USB stick already and there is a full manual on there on the printer itself, assembly, leveling, and how to use the Photon Slicer. So let's get right into it. Um, just gonna look at the pieces here. So we've got the acrylic top, which completely removes. Now, one notable thing is you always wanna make sure that the acrylic top has basically this little sticker here on the back when you're putting it on. So when you're looking at it, so you can read the, the sticker that's in Chinese, but there's English at the bottom. Now, as I said in my earlier video, this is a much smaller print volume than say the Photon or the Photon S, which both have the same print volume. Um, this does have a different way of leveling, which may or may not be nicer. I guess I'll figure that out for myself. And the resin vat. So a really nice thing about the resin vat is, and I'll show you when I'm close up, but inside the resin vat, it actually has lines that will tell you how much resin you have in the machine. So, but right now I'm gonna leave that out because we need to get this guy going and first thing we're gonna have to do is level it. So I'll be right back and we'll start leveling. Okay, so I've already plugged it in and powered it on. So now we're gonna grab the bill plate and this, I was wrong, it is not for the vat, it is for these four screws right here. So what you need to do is make sure that these four screws are loose and I've already made sure that they're loose. So you've actually got some play that go up and down a little bit. Now I'm just gonna take this I'm gonna screw the build platform directly on. Okay, so now you can see there's still play right there. Now I'm gonna take just a regular piece of paper that I've cut down and I'm gonna put it right on top up here of the screen. And then I'm gonna go, let me back out here, hold on. So from the menu system, which looks just like the Photon or Photon S, I'm gonna to go to tools, move Z, and then I'm just gonna hit home. And you'll see what happens here. So it goes down. And it's gonna place itself right at the home point. So now, this is much easier than the Photon or Photon S. All we wanna do is put gentle, even pressure right here with, on both sides and tighten up these screws. So now that's nice and snug. That might actually be a little too snug. 
There we go. We want to be able to pull it out, but not really push it back. So I think we've accomplished that. Now we're going to go back out here, hit Z zero. Now it rises up and it's ready for the resin vat. So I'm just going to take this, push it back till it hits the screws and gently tighten these down just until they're tight. They don't have to be hammered down. I have broken more than one screen on a machine by over tightening these screws. All right. So now, I want to get this out of the way. So I'm going to move it up 10 millimeters. And I'm going to do that a few times. And then I'm going to take the USB stick. I've already gone and sliced. I'm not going to do a whole slicing video with this. Um, I may do a slice video on its own, um, that's specifically geared for slicing with photon, uh, workshop. But in the meantime, I'm just going to do the print video because I'm also going to bring the washing care up here so we can set that up while this is printing. All right. So here we go. I am going to move this little guy and get myself set up a little bit more. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I grabbed a pair of gloves from the bag. And I know I always say I never wear gloves, I never wear gloves. Well, I started wearing gloves all the time when I'm using resin. So, Anycubic sent me a bottle of their standard clear resin. With this, it does not come with resin. You have to purchase it separately. But for the review, they sent me a bottle. All right, I am going to, my cats get, their fur gets everywhere, so. <sighs> there we go. So now I'm just gonna pour not a ton of resin in here. That should be more than enough. That is almost 80 milliliters. I think this print is gonna take about 20. So that's more than enough. Make sure to always put the cover right back on. Okay. Now the cover is going to go on the photon. Now I can take these gloves off. So I'm just going to go back all the way and I'm going to go to print and I've already sliced this. I actually sliced, um, one of the mini Ninja Turtles from Wexter, he just released them. So I'm going to do that. There it is. So there's the picture of it. And now I just press play. Okay, so now let's talk about the washing cure. So here's the machine right here. And here's all the stuff that it came with minus the manual, which is right here. So this comes, same thing. It comes with uh, the Anycubic QC test card, the warranty card, some more tools. And it also comes with an extra bearing. And I'll show you where that's good, that needs to go if you need to change the bearing. So here's all the parts. If you had actually watched um, the video I did earlier today <laughs> for these two machines and the Mega Zero, you'll, uh, you'll see some stuff I have there. Again, my cats. <sighs> okay. So what this comes with is the acrylic cover. It comes with this removable basket. The washing tub that has the propeller in, in there. A nice airtight cover for that. So this is gasket sealed and pretty leak proof, which is really good. That way you can store, if you're using uh, alcohol or resin away, you can store it in here and not have to worry about it. 
So, and then this is the acrylic turntable. So when it, it spins, it's gonna cure. And then this is the bag of goodness that I haven't opened yet. This is what actually allows you to, to wash things while you've just, uh, while you still have them on the build plate. This one's all wrapped in saran wrap, how nice. All right, so I'm gonna put these to the side because I don't really need those right now. Then I'm gonna snip the power cable. And this end of the power cable. And now we're good to go. All right, so it looks like there are multiple platform holders, which is really nice. So this is a platform holder here. Also this one, this one's adjustable. So if you've got a larger print, you really just drop that in there. And then let's, 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 let's get all set up here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, the bucket goes right there, just like that. Now, because we're obviously printing, I can't demonstrate. So I grabbed a build plate from my Photon. So what we're gonna do is, it, let's just say there was a, a large print here. I'm gonna slide that right on and screw it down. Then you would slide that whole piece right in here. So if there was a full print here, this would be full of liquid and you would go. Now the other way, if you've got a small print and you really want the, that, the, the print to just be down here, that's where this comes in. So what you'll do is you'll do the same thing You'll screw this on here. Let's make this tight. So it's already lower that you can see. And if you need it to go even lower, if it's a really small print, it can pretty much go all the way to the bottom. So let's just say for this print, I definitely don't need it to be full. So probably only about halfway. So I'll be using this. So it's nice that they thought of different options. So once you do your wash, you take that off. You put your turntable on, if I can line it up. And then you cure. So let's actually turn it on. And there it is. It will not activate. It's the same thing as the Photon Zero. You've got your little tag back here and there's a sensor in back. If it does not see this, it will stop or it won't start. That goes on. And if I want to cure, I can't see. It's in cure mode. Start curing. And you can see the, it's, the table is rotating and the LEDs are on. So there's timer functions and then I believe you can just run it indefinitely until you feel like your print is cured properly. But we'll get more into this once this print finishes. So it's gonna take a few hours and I will be back. 
I have a completed print on my Photon Zero. So it's been actually a couple days I had to work, so I didn't have time to come back to this. So I've left the UV cover on, I haven't moved it. So everything in here should be okay. I've got the washing care set up. First thing I'm gonna do is just quickly again, this came with all of the, uh, the extra parts. So I'm using, uh, well, the resin I'm using is the Anycubic Clear. It also came with the two brackets and the wash basket. Now, the one thing I kind of figured out in the process of uh, going over the stuff again, the Photon Zero build platform, the way it attaches, it does not actually attach to either of these brackets unless you kind of manufacture something, which I feel like I'm going to do. So I'm gonna use the basket in this case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove the cover and put it over here. And I'm gonna grab my scraper that, they, that came with the Photon Zero. I'm going to take the curing plate out. I'm gonna take the cover off of the wash basket. Now, just so you know, um, the cure platform here has a cutout for the basket. Oh, it beeped. And it's very magnetic, so it stays right in place, okay? I'm just gonna move this out of the way a little bit. And now I've got some paper towels and a spray bottle of IPA as well. And I'm just gonna make sure I don't spill all my resin everywhere because I know I'm gonna. So I'm just gonna use this. I'm gonna put on a pair of gloves to be safe. just in case I get any resin on my hands. So I'm just gonna put that over there for right now and remove the bill plate. So I hollowed this model and this model is actually uh, one of Wexter's newest models. This one of his mini dudes. It is the one of the Ninja Turtles. So I'm just gonna pop it down here and hopefully this will come off pretty easily. And it does. So I'm gonna tip it this way and hopefully be able to catch all the resin. I'm just gonna put this back up here. So now with any luck, I can kind of drain him a little bit because one thing I didn't think of is this is gonna be, this model is hollow and I didn't think about the washing care dealing with the hollow model and all of the extra resin that could be inside there. Like the piece I just dropped in the bat. So it doesn't really wanna drain out, so I'm gonna to have to deal with that. So anyway, for this, I'm gonna use the basket. I am just going to put this down for a second and slide the machine over so you guys can see it in the camera. So I'm going to put the model in the basket and place the basket in. Just like that. Now I can take my gloves off and I just have some IPA that I got at Walmart, it's 91%. And I'm gonna pour it in until my model is covered and I hope I have enough over here. If not, I will run over and get some more over there. Not quite enough, I'm gonna grab some more. And I wanna just make sure that the model is completely submerged and it's floating. That's a big shock. Okay. I am going to put the cover back on here and move this out of the way a little bit. And hopefully, oh, get a little spill. Always clean up your resin if you spill it. I always have a, a spray bottle of alcohol that I use to clean my FDM print beds. 
always make sure you clean it up right away, especially if you have kids or pets. You really don't want them getting into this. I'm gonna move this right over. I'm just gonna use this water, alcohol a little bit to clean off my spatula so the resin doesn't cure on it. Throw all this away in my trash, which is over there. Now I'm gonna put the cover on. And again, I know I mentioned this earlier, but you have to make sure that that white tag is in the back and you can read the anti-cubic on the front or it will not activate. And then, looking right over here in the front, I'm actually gonna come around for a second. I am going to press the mode button, so it says wash, right here on the top, so the wash button, oop, so the wash button is lit, and then I'm gonna hit start. And now you can see that it's agitating the liquid. So I'm gonna demonstrate the safety feature. What happens when you take off the lid? Oh, it stops. And I'm just gonna grab a pair of tweezers. Yep, his foot was stuck. And lay him on his, well, maybe not on his back. And put the cover back on. And it will continue. And it's done. All right, so let's see what we have here. Well, feels pretty clean to me. I still have some resin inside there, which is not gonna come out, which is my fault because I didn't poke big enough holes in it, I don't think. Yep, I used tiny holes and they didn't, this one worked, but now nothing will come out of it. I'm gonna to try to drain this a little bit through that one hole and see if it works, or maybe I can get another hole happening in here. Oh, there we go. All right, maybe I can get this to drain now. So I'm gonna to try to drain this off camera a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay, I have the model here in my hand. Here he is. Now, I probably should have thought about using clear and hollowing and whatever after the fact, but whatever, it's all done. So I'm gonna move on with what I have. One thing I also didn't remember is normally when I'm drying off a model, I use my compressor, which is down there, and it's really super loud. So I ran upstairs and got some canned air. So we just dry off the model with air, or at least this is what I do. Pick up that last little support. There we go, and we should be good. I didn't pay very careful attention to his the bottom of his feet, so I hope he stands up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just lift this whole bucket right out here, and I'm just gonna put it over here for right now. It does have the reseal. It does have the resealable lid, but I have the basket in there, so it's not going to fit. Now I'm going to take the curing platform and pop it right on. So now we're good there, and then I'm going to take my model and hope he stands up. Maybe he will stand up leaning forward on his bow stick. Maybe not. I can resolve that very quickly with a piece of double-sided tape. Hopefully. His feet are wet, so, or were wet. So this may or may not work. Just gonna put that there. And hopefully this will work, anyway. 
This is just a test. So I'm gonna put that on. And I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna press the button to cure. I'm gonna have it on six minutes and hit play. Now you can see it's just rotating around the UV light. And we're not gonna sit here and watch this go for six minutes. Maybe I'll fast forward or maybe I'll just cut, but we'll see in a minute. All right, six minutes later, here we go. Kind of funny, he turned out exactly where I put him. And here we go. So, looks pretty good. So his, there was still a little bit of IPA left in his feet, so I just got that on my fingers, but that's okay. Overall, the print looks really good. Nice and strong. The one thing I don't like about clear resin is it does cure with a yellow tint. I know there's ways around fixing that, but in general, the model looks really good. I know it doesn't look that way because of the way it's hollowed, and I should have thought of that, but I didn't. So for now, we're gonna go with this. Now, I have some other resin that I need to review uh, that was sent to me by filaments.ca. So I'm going to um, do a review on that. And I think I, what I'll do is I will use the Photon Zero and uh, do a full review on the machine. And I don't know if the wash and cure really needs another video because it's pretty much wash, which we did, and cure which we did. So maybe it doesn't need one. But anyway, I want to cut this video because it's probably pretty long as it is. And I don't think it needs to be super, super crazy long. So anyway, this is Chris from Versus 3D. And if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button. I think it's down here. I think it's down here. And uh, click the bell to receive notifications and you'll know when this video is up. I also have the, um, the Mega Zero that I have to do. And so there's gonna be a couple of videos on that. I have the build video, which is already shot. And then I have to shoot the, um, the print video on that one. So hopefully I can make those on the shorter side-ish. And uh, if you like this video or any other of the videos, please feel free to buy me a copy. There's a link in the box down below. And anyway, we didn't get to see Ty today and uh, maybe he'll pop up in another video soon. And that's all I got, so have a great day.